Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Uh, how many people here today have an Android app or game? Okay. How many people here are on TV? All right, so looking to do TV. Awesome. Um, my name's Dave. I'm a developer evangelist for Amazon. That's all my contact info. Just because this is the first time we're meeting, it doesn't have to be the last. My entire job focuses around mobile app and game development. And so if you're looking to get onto our Fire TV device, our new Fire Phone device, uh, our Kindle Fire tablets, and our store also runs on Android phone and tablets, I'm the person that can help facilitate and help you with that. Okay? Everything I'm going to show you here today applies for any kind of Android TV. I'm just using Fire TV as an example, but a lot of the things to keep in mind, like using different layout files, overscan, color, all of that stuff will apply for whatever store that you're submitting to. Sound good? All right. Oops. So everything that I'm going to show you today, you can just go to developer.amazon.com forward slash fire TV. That's where you get the SDK. That's where you get the guidelines. You can download code samples. Everything's available for you there today. It's completely free. Even if you use, for example, our uh, mobile ad SDK, that's completely free. That'll run in Google Play and that'll run on iOS as well. So all the information you need is right at that URL. So let's talk about Fire TV. How many people have heard of Fire TV? OK, so API level 17 is what we're built on top of. So it's basically Android 422. We call it Fire OS. You can think of it as Android underneath the covers with a custom skin for customers to make things easier to use. We also have a controller. OK, so you can use the standard remote that comes with Fire TV, or you can use our controller. Uh, and this gives you the ability to have really great game experiences using a controller. It's pretty powerful hardware. So it's built on a Qualcomm quad-core Snapdragon. So it's a Crate 300 uh, processor, and you get an Adreno 320 GPU. Uh, how many people here have tried writing on a device <laughs> that only has half a gig or a gig of RAM, right? So it's got two gigs of RAM in there. You're going to be able to push some pretty, uh, pretty big textures uh, inside of your game. So let's talk about the 10-foot experience. If you haven't done TV before, 10 feet is kind of the industry standard of where you want to step back and look at your user interface. So today, you know, if you're writing for a phone or you're writing for a tablet, you know, the first thing when I'm talking to developers, if they're moving into that world, kind of from the web world, they don't realize how big your thumbs cover that screen, right? Um, it's not until you actually use the device that you realize the, 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 you know, the real estate of what 1080p will get you. It's the same with TV. So you may load your phone or your tablet app up. Things look great on a tablet or a phone. And you step back 10 feet away, and you can't really see anything or interact. Um, here's a quote. You, know, you basically want to look at the process that from 10 feet away, everything is clear. It's efficient. It's simple. So you may need to look at your current user interface today and simplify what's on the screen. And you want to eliminate as much controller input as you can, whether that's a remote or you're using a controller. The idea is that the user can accomplish any of their tasks very quickly without going through a bunch of screens or hitting a bunch of numbers. The other no-no is keyboard. <laughs> on any type of TV, uh, TV device, you want to use keyboard input as little as possible. So I'm going to use the Fire TV UI as an example. You'll see we actually posted the design guidelines at that URL I gave you. So you can check it out. You can use this as a sample to walk through of a 10-foot user experience. Obviously, if you're making a game, you can create any type of user interface you want. This is more of a master detail view. So if you're walking through and you're starting out at a menu and you want to go to subcategories, you can think of this as a way to navigate through. Does that make sense? OK. So number one, remote friendly. All of these Android micro consoles are coming from uh, an area where they'll have a remote out of the box. So what you're seeing here is the Fire TV remote. In the middle, you can see a home button. These buttons are exactly like regular Android devices today. So home is going to take you to the home screen. The little hamburger there on the right is going to take you to the Android menu. And then you have your back button. 
You want to reserve the media buttons at the bottom for audio or video playback only. And then you have a controller for up, down, left, right that you're seeing there underneath the microphone icon. And the microphone icon is something unique to Fire TV. I don't know if anybody's seen the Gary Busey commercials where you can actually talk into the remote like a mic and it will search for content on the TV. So from a, an app and game perspective, you're really dealing with the regular Android controls and directions of up, down, left, and right. So here's a pattern that we used in order to build our UI and 10-foot experience. We have screens, we have views, and we have flows. So here is the home screen. Now this is just an example. It's not an actual home screen, so this is just content made up for the, for the mock-up. But what you can see here are the icons are very large, and you can get to that top level content by moving up or down very quickly. So I can move between what you're seeing upcoming Wild West, underwater, and outer space with just two taps. I can move back and forth. It's not hidden amongst a bunch of submenus. And once I select something, that item is being highlighted, and then it's moving to a bigger uh, kind of orange color. So it's very easy when you're 10 feet back to know exactly where you're at. Now what we do today, if you're iterating through a bunch of Android fragments, we actually add the selection capability for you. So you don't have to worry about, I've got a remote, Dave, how do I make sure I know what I'm currently selected? We're gonna do that right out of the box for you on the device. But you can decide how that looks like in your UI when it's selected. And then what we're doing here is we're using a 1D list view. So if you've got content that's already in landscape, you can think of this as a vertical list. It's basically portrait <laughs> on its side. Uh, I'm moving from one item to the other. And then when I select one of those items, now I get the detailed view. And in the detail view, I'm exposing information about the selected item. And only at this point do I bring that information forward. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's really looking at how you're currently navigating your app today and bringing that forward so it's a seamless experience from 10 feet away. Chances are if you've got a landscape design, it's just gonna work, right? You wanna look at just integrating the remote, making sure that you've separated out the different categories of data and that you can move quickly between button states. So selecting, not selecting. How many people here like using different resolutions? for Android, right? <laughs> um, for Fire TV, what we've done is you target XHDPI, so target 1080p and you're done. Okay, we will scale up and we will scale down for you automatically. So what I've got here is just a chart. You're probably used to all these settings for the different uh, Android resolutions. Just create all of your assets for 1080p and that'll just work on Fire TV. If you're looking at orientation, you don't have to worry about that at all at Fire TV. We're gonna return false for both get rotation and get orientation. Um, you know, no customer is gonna come up and turn their <laughs> TV on their side, although that might be fun to watch, right? So um, we, we've put false for all of those and you don't have to worry about any of those code changes in your own app. So basically 1080p, we're gonna dynamically adjust for you. Now, if you are the type of development shop that likes to have one APK for everything, you can do that. You're simply gonna go in and you're gonna create just a layout for Fire TV. If you wanna have multiple APKs, and in fact, in the Amazon App Store, we allow you to target every version of the Kindle Fire tablets, Android phone and tablets, Fire Phone and Fire TV. So you could have numerous APKs for the same app if you want. But if you want to go ahead and keep it all in one a APK, it's basically just changing your layout. And I've put a, a bit.ly up here to some of the Android developer resources for looking at multiple screens and assigning different layouts. Now, if you haven't targeted a TV before, you're going to encounter something called overscan. This really doesn't occur with TVs today, right, now that we have LCD, but TVs from, you know, 10 years ago, you never know what somebody is running on. Uh, that outside, see that red bar? Your screen, none of that is going to be visible. 
So you want to leave a pixel area around the border. In fact, what I've seen a lot of developers do is the first time you run the game, you get kind of that black box with the arrows, and you can adjust so that you're seeing all the, the viewable area. So understand that overscan, especially in older TVs, is something that you have to be aware of so that your full interface is visible. Another thing to think about is color. So if your app or game has a lot of warm colors, so you're using a lot of reds and oranges, I have three different TVs in my house, and they all reproduce that color differently. And you know, when you have a phone or you have a tablet, these screens are really accurate at reproducing colors. TV, not so much. So you may want to think about using cool colors. So the blues, the purples, and the grays, there's less of a, a saturation um, when you're moving across those type of things. Now, notifications. So today, if I'm using a, a tablet or a phone device, I'm going to get a system tray that I can pull down from the top and see any of my standard, standard Android uh, notifications. That's not going to happen in a, in a TV scenario. And what we've done for Fire TV is we've taken the standard notification library. We have our own. It works very much the same way from a code sense. But those notifications are going to be handled in a way that a controller or a remote can easily dismiss and interact with. So here's a mock-up of an informational notification. And you can see this is something that's popping up. Perhaps it's the next track in a song being played. And I can move my remote or controller and tap on that. You have the ability to bring up the Android menu off that notification, so what you're seeing in the sample notification. If I go in and I set this up, when the customer hits that button, they have the ability to play or dismiss. So you can imagine some different scenarios. Maybe you want to interact uh, with a notification, allow that customer to do something else within your app or game. You can do that. What's important to remember is a modal dialogue is going to take over the entire experience. So it's going to stay on the screen until I do something. So here, you're actually seeing a modal dialogue and what that looks like. I have to dismiss it before I can move on. Make sense? OK. Now, game circle. If you are using uh, achievements, leaderboards, any of those type of things in game circle, what we've done today with Fire TV is we've pour, ported our Game Circle API, and customers can play your game on a tablet, they can play it on a phone, and they can play it on TV. And all of that data is synced through the Amazon Cloud. Has anybody here heard of WhisperSync? Right, if you're using Kindle today, it's a couple lines of code. You can do the same thing with Game Circle, and you'll have the ability to sync data, levels, you know, I, I'm playing on my TV when I'm home, and then I'm on the subway to work, and I have the ability to pick up exactly where I left off. All of that you can do with Game Circle. You can do achievements in your game. So you're just going to set that up with a little bit of metadata in our developer portal. And you can unlock achievements as well as have leaderboards. So this is nothing you have to create from scratch. This is all integrated. And in fact, on the controller, you can see where the person is pushing in the middle there. That's a dedicated game circle button. So I can hit that at any time, and I can get information about my gamer profile, as well as the currently running game and all of the achievements and leaderboards that are available. Uh, so you can get more information about this API at developer.amazon.com apps. Icons and screenshots. So this is an example of a 10-foot experience on Fire TV of what those screenshots look like. So it's very different from when if we're on a phone or if we're on the web. You can see most of the TV screen now is taken up by that screenshot. So if you don't have larger thumbnails today, you want to think about creating those resources. We've got full information about what size those uh, images should be, but they're basically captured 1080p images. And a little bit different if you're using your phone or your tablet today, you're probably doing ADB over a USB cable or something like that. When you move into the TV realm, obviously your computer and your, your development laptop is not going to be right next to the TV. And so what we do is we do wireless debugging using ADB. You just need to be on the same uh, network. So you connect both devices to the same wireless network in your house. I've done things like ad hoc, ad hoc network with my phone. 
So you can do that and kind of debug against any device. And then you can just do an ADB shell and pull down the screenshot of your gamer app actually running on the TV. So pretty easy to pull down high resolution photos and then upload them to the developer portal. Make sense? Okay, so some submission tips. The first thing I wanted to tell you about is uh, if you are looking at targeting Fire TV, we have something called the App Store Developer Select Program. So the first one is Enhanced On-Device merch on Merchandising. So there's a dedicated category. Uh, this also works on Amazon.com. So if a customer is looking for Fire TV apps or games, you get select placement there. And then you get something around Amazon Coins. Now Amazon Coins is a virtual currency that exists within our App Store and customers get coins for buying devices. So they get coins for buying the uh, Fire TV controller. They get coins when they get the Fire TV. And then they get coins for downloading apps or games within the store. So you have the ability, if you qualify uh, for this program, to get 500,000 Amazon coins up to three of your apps or games. So this is basically $5,000 value. And then you decide how to give out coins. So for example, if you had an, uh, a game on Fire TV, you could say, for Casual Connect, everybody who downloads my game gets 100 coins, which is, um, or you could say 1,000 coins, right, which is basically a, a, a dollar US. So you can uh, reward people just for downloading your app, and then they can use this currency for buying and downloading items in games and other games and apps. So that's a program currently going on today. Um, these tips work for our store as well as all other stores. You want to really utilize the full area. So what I talked about, 1080p resolution, so 1920 by 1080, you want to make sure you're targeting that. If it's running on Fire TV, we're going to automatically scale up and scale down. The first thing when you're, you're testing on your TV, you're, you may find, depending on how you've set it up, that all of your UI aligns, but your graphical resources look <laughs> pixelated, right, or misaligned, so you may need to poke around and make sure there's no visual defects. Remember, limited text entry, so we're looking at a remote and a controller input. Uh, if a lot of the games I see about the only text entry you need to do is enter your name, right? Uh, so if you've got, uh, obviously you wouldn't do this, but if you had a notepad app, not something you want to target for the Fire TV or the TV screen. The, most of these micro consoles have limited storage in comparison to what you're seeing on phone and tablet. So Fire TV, for example, has eight gigs of storage, but a lot of that's taken up by what's already on the device. So two gigs or less in size is recommended. If your app or game is going to be four gigs, it may not even fit on the device. So you want to think about the type of resources that you're bringing down onto the micro console. And then look at how you navigate through your app Use a simple UI, so up, down, left, right, all of these mov uh, movements are going to map to a remote. So remote first for any of the input to move through your, your interface. Does that make sense? All right. So developer.amazon.com, Fire TV, everything I've mentioned, all of these tips are from a blog post I've done. So you'll see that up on our blog, as well as links to additional resources. I'll be over here. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you.